I'm Cameron, a DIY obsessed, home improvement and renovation freak. I've been renovating and modifying properties for over 10 years and I'll take on pretty much any DIY task throughout the house. As long as the project's inspiring and interesting, I'll give it a go. I've faced some incredibly tough challenges in the DIY space throughout the years, but none have been as exciting and possibly as difficult as this one. I'll be taking you guys along for the full renovation from start to finish of this 1973 property whilst we turn it into a modern home for the family. Yeah, I was hoping it wasn't going to come to this, but I did have a funny feeling that it would. Um, yeah, green goo. Before I do that, a brew and a custard cream. This DIYer won't give up without a fight. This is the renovation. So I really did buy the house that nobody else wanted. This house sat on the market for nearly a year in a location that is really, really sought after, but nobody wanted it. And you're gonna see why. The house needs pretty much a complete renovation. It was built in 1973, and when we walk inside, it's, it's like a time warp. It's like going back to 1973. The decor, the fittings, pretty much everything. It's had some money spent in the past, but it's been a very long time. An elderly person lived here, but we were told by some neighbors across the street that the house has been empty for between three and six years. So in this first episode, we're mostly gonna take a look around the house and I'll give you a bit of a tour. And we will look at some of the initial problems that we've had, because it's only day two, we've only just moved in here and there's already been a whole host of issues. So we'll tackle some of them and some of the initial plans as well and, and a few visions that I have for the property. And I'm going to ask for your feedback throughout a lot of this as well. So if you see something and you think that you've got an idea for it, drop a comment down below because I want to know all of your ideas. Uh, this is episode one of the renovation series. It won't take away anything from the regular DIY videos that you see on my channel every couple of weeks. We'll still be making those. So we're about to step inside through the front door and you'll be hit by the 1970s decor. So as we come in, you can see what really attracted us to this hall area. It's nice and light and it's quite big. I think this bit here was an extension back in the late 80s. And to be honest, it's been really poorly done. You've got some really Nasty plastering. I don't know if you can make that out on the camera, but it's pretty horrendous. Um, you've got lots of old fixtures. I mean that, that can go on eBay, I think. Lots of old wood on the staircase. Suppose that was fashionable once upon a time. I don't think it'd get through building regs now because you could probably fit a small, um, a small child through there. So as we come further into the hall, there's a little downstairs toilet here. I mean, this one doesn't smell too great, I'll be honest. I think the initial plan for this is probably to um, just modernize it and brighten it up because it's pretty dull and pretty grim in here. Surface mounted pipe work really annoys me, so that'll all get concealed. Um, I don't know when we're gonna get around to that little project, but uh, yeah, I think for now we'll shut the door. So now if we head through to the lounge, you can see We've put some of our furniture in here. And before we have a look around this room, that kind of brings me on to what one of the biggest challenges is gonna be. And that is gonna be living in the property with a family and a dog and all the usual stuff. Because previous renovations that I've done, there's been nobody living there. I've done a couple of major renovations um, and some partial renovations, but the two major ones, um, they, they didn't have anyone living there. It was a case of go in day one, chuck everything in a skip and start again. Well, this place presents its own challenges because I can't do that. I think that's what makes the series quite relevant to you guys because the likelihood is a lot of you, when you buy a home, are gonna be doing it up and you're gonna face similar challenges to what I'm gonna face. Right, let's carry on with a little tour. So as we come in to the lounge, you've got this piece here which is an extension that they've done. I mean, again, some real shoddy, shoddy work. The plastering is absolutely horrendous, so that'll all have to be redone. Uh, the only good thing, really, and then some more of those old wall lights, the only good thing about the extensions is they actually have sockets in them, because the rest of the house doesn't really have any sockets. I think this is the only socket in this whole area. They're only singles. So apart from the extensions that have been done, 
the, uh, the wiring is much to be desired. Um, there's an old gas fireplace behind the sofa over there. And if we carry on through this lounge slash diner, or what we're using as a diner, you'll see, look at the, the 80s, I assume it's 80s, carpet. I mean, that's really gearish. So we've got this old fireplace here. I think they had the chimney built after the house was built. They've just stood an uh, electric fire inside the builder's opening. If we have a look. You can see there is a working chimney behind there. Put that back in for now. We're thinking of putting a wood burner in, so there's a lot of potential there. Obviously all this old half and everything will come out, um, that'll go. I think what we're gonna do is take this wall out here, but I need to see if it's structural. I need to have some floorboards up. It is a solid wall. You can hear it's a solid wall. Um, but I think the joists are running that way. Um, and I don't think the wall above is sitting on top of this wall. So I don't think it's structural, but I need to have some floorboards up and check. Hopefully it's not, hopefully it's just a dividing wall and we can have that out and make a nice big lounge. The original idea was to take out this wall here and I think actually now re-looking at our plans, I think what we might do is decide to leave that wall in to create a division. You can see there's a conservatory here um, and I think the plan's probably gonna be knock that conservatory down because it's pretty awful anyway. Knock that down, knock through the kitchen wall there and have a kitchen diner all the way through with a set of doors on the back. So the plan for this area of the lounge is really to modernize it because you can see we've got lots of old um, 80s fixtures and stuff that'll probably go on eBay. We'll take that wall out We'll modernise the whole thing, make it really light throughout. We'll have a wood burner where I show you that fireplace is, and then somewhere, possibly on this wall over here, I'm gonna build a media wall as well. And that's something you guys have been asking me to do, so I really wanna bring you a media wall build. So we're coming from the lounge side into the kitchen now, and you can see, again, it's just very dated. Check out those old lights. I don't think there's any LED lights in the house. So if we look at some of the kitchen now, um, I've never seen that before, tiling on a cooker hood. I don't know when this kitchen was put in. I've had a little look around for some stickers and stuff, but there's nothing that gives me any real clues as to when the kitchen was put in. I don't know if it was original. Uh, the house was built in 1973. It looks 70s, maybe 80s. Apart from being dated, it's actually lasted reasonably well. And there's quite a few mod cons and stuff. Um, that you get in a modern kitchen. So I think someone thought about it and spent a bit of money on it. Um, but yeah, again, it's just gonna be a nice, modern, light, open kitchen. Don't really know the little ins and outs of it at the moment. Um, it's probably gonna be a little while till we get onto this room. So I'm just gonna live in it for now and um, fix all the little leaks and annoying bits and bobs so we can live in it until we get around to uh, putting the extension on and doing this room. If we head through to the utility room, it's quite a big utility room. That actually was quite a positive for us. I particularly love the way they've just tiled around the sockets, but somebody either couldn't be bothered or made a bit of a hash of it. Now, if we take a look, there's, there's plenty to do in this room. Obviously it needs a complete rip out, new cabinets. I hate this horrible box section. You'll see more about the plans on the heating system in a minute, because we've got some problems with the zone valve, so some bits I need to do over there. Now I'll show you a bit more of this in a minute, but there is a ton of damp behind here. You can see loads of damp, and that runs all the way behind the washing machine. And I need to fix the drain for the washing machine, which is on the other side of the wall. We'll take a look at that in a minute. I think the reason for a lot of this damp is just the gland that's leaking on the stopcock there. So they are the first two little jobs that we're gonna tackle because we need to make the place livable and I can't have leaks from the drains outside and leaks from the extension and all that sort of thing. Before I do any major work, we need to get the place livable. So let's head upstairs now. The property is smaller upstairs than it is downstairs because it's had a lot of extensions downstairs uh, kind of previously. This is one of the bigger bedrooms. This is quite a nice big room and the, um, the windows are nice and big and lets a lot of light in. If we take a look, this is the, uh, the second smallest room. It's kind of gonna be my office room. Um, they've just painted it white. All the ceilings are Artex. So I'm gonna knock the tops off that and have the ceilings plastered. 
Um, you can see here, check out that for some painting, just roll straight over the switch. Little windows above the, uh, above the doors, I think three or four of the rooms have got those. They're going to have to come out. The landing here, we've got the main bathroom. Well, our last property was a lot more modern and it had an ensuite, so we're definitely going to miss that. And eventually, when we extend, I'm going to have to put another bedroom in with an ensuite and a walk in wardrobe. I think that is the plan. It's been a fair bit of bodgery in here. Uh, the lady seemed to uh, like fixing things with pieces of tissue, so I found quite a lot of bits of tissue around that have been uh, fixing different things. The shower has been a bit of a problem already. The mixer valve is absolutely knackered and cold water is passing through into the hot side. So that's been a bit of a problem that is currently isolated. So until the bathroom's done, I'm not too sure what the plan is with that. The bath or the bathroom in general doesn't seem to leak. So that's one blessing, at least we can use it. So um, check out this silicon work, you'll like this. Hopefully the camera picks it up, but somebody's just got the, uh, the skeleton gun and just jammed a load of silicon in there without kind of really doing anything with it. So I'm not too sure what that's all about, why they did it in just the bottom corners either. Strange, there's no fan in here um, and it smells a little bit damp. It's not too bad, it's kind of usable. Uh, again, carpeted floor in the bathroom, Ooh, pretty grim. But it's quite a nice big bathroom space. It's certainly an area that I can work with. I'm quite looking forward to do in this room. I did stick my head up in the loft hatch just here and the property has been insulated. They had it done in 2012, 300 mil of uh, insulation. So that's pretty good. I haven't got to worry about that. Um, and the walls have had insulation blown into them as well. So the place has been insulated pretty well. So that does save me one little job. In this cupboard here, there's nothing really special to see. It's just the hot water cylinder. Right, let's move on to the next room. There's a real annoying bit here. Oh yeah, squeaky floors. So there's plenty of squeaky floors to fix. Um, the main bedroom has all this fitted furniture above the bed, which makes the bedroom actually look a lot smaller than it is. We can make do with this. I'll get rid of all the, uh, the fitted furniture. Check that in a skip. Um, put some nice doors on the, uh, the built-in wardrobe here. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do with this weird alcove thing yet. If you've got any ideas, do let me know because I'm a bit stumped with that. I might even end up studding it, plastering it, and sticking a TV on the wall, to be honest. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Two pendant lights, one over near the window and one up here. So, um, yeah, I just want one in the middle. Not sure why we've got two. Again, the work in here is much like the rest of the bedrooms modernize it, move the lights, skim the ceilings, just generally for now, uh, until we have an extension, just modernizing this room and making this the main bedroom. So that'll probably be one of the one of the first jobs. One thing I have noticed in this room especially is there's no sockets anywhere. I really need to just have a look at the wiring, what condition it's in, see whether we need to rewire the place or whether we can just add more sockets in. I'm not too sure yet. I need to see what the general condition of the wiring is like. But the board in here is down in the garage and that is an old rewirable fuse board. That isn't a nice modern consumer unit. So there is that, that's going to have to be changed. So there's a lot of considerations with the electrics that I need to have a look at before we go delving into that. Right, we'll have a look at the last bedroom and then we'll head outside and have a look at the garden. So as we head through to the fourth bedroom, uh, that is much of the same. Again, ceilings need skimming, needs a good decorate. So yeah, in general, just modernization, as is the case with all of the bedrooms, really. Right, let's head outside and I'll show you the garden. So the lady that live here clearly liked her flowers and I think she had a gardener and she really kind of looked after the place. There's some really nice flowers out here in the garden. If we head down the side of the property, you can see the chimney there. If we take a wander, just over here, you can see it's like an old shed that's um, got more more holes in it than anything else. I actually quite like some of the borders, so we're going to hopefully see what plants grow in the spring and see what ones we want to keep. And then at the end of the garden here, there's like a little summer house thing. But the roof has already blown off it. You can see the felt laying on the floor down there. Uh, so that's going to get knocked down. And I mean, unfortunately, some of these lovely mature 
plants at the top of the garden here are going to go because I think here is where I'm going to end up building my workshop another project that of course I'll be showing you guys on the channel so that's it for the initial kind of tour of the property I haven't shown you a couple of bits, I haven't shown you the loft, but I'll show you that next time. Um, and I haven't shown you the garage because, to be honest, it's full of where we've moved in and just chucked everything in the garage. Um, the gas meter's in there and the electric meter, but other than that, there isn't a huge amount to see at this stage. Um, I think what we'll do now is move on to fixing some of the problems that we've come up against on day one already. Now, priorities when you've got a missus and kid is to get the washing machine plumbed in. And if you look here, this is the waste from the washing machine. And sure enough, the pipe has gone all brittle and it's broken away so I need to see if today I can pull this pipe out of here and replace this piece of pipe if I can't it's going to be a case of breaking away this concrete and uh, delving a little bit deeper and replacing the fittings as well and then this one that comes from the sink in the utility room that's not great either so that'll probably all be getting replaced at some point but as a day one temp fix let's change this pipe over we'll get the pipe clips off and attack this pipe to get it out the screw heads are all rusty and knackered though and I ain't got many tools here we'll just chop it off a lot of my tools are in storage for the next few days what I don't want is the pipe to break away inside so that bit's come out nice and easy That's that end off. Hopefully we can pull that pipe right through the wall now. Pop down a screw fix, grab a new fitting and build it all back up. Silicon spray on there just makes it a little bit easier. Pop the fitting on. So now we've got that bit built up, we put the pipe clip back on. That'll hold the pipe so we can push the old bit into the fitting without too much difficulty. Before I do that, a brew and a custard cream. Bit of silicon spray, make it a little bit easier. We should be able to push it through the wall and into the fitting. Just build the rest of this bag up now. Right, that's a bit of a quick fix done down there. And I'll cement around that in a little while. What I need to do now, because let me move the camera, but anyway, what I'm gonna need to do now is have a look at the boiler and figure out why we've got no hot water because I'm getting an air bashing from the missus. So that's job number two, let's go. You can see we've got a floor standing boiler here and we've got the uh, programmer on the wall and every time we put the hot water on, we're just getting hot radiators. So all night long I sweated like a pig. We've probably got a zone valve issue somewhere, that's my guess and I'm willing to bet that if you come over here, this panel here looks to me like it comes out. So we're going to open this up and I'm hoping that there's a zone valve in there and um, see what's wrong with it. Hey presto, there she is, right. Quite a common issue these if you're not getting any hot water and when you turn it on your heating's on, it's quite often the, uh, the zone valve or motorised valves. Let's see if she's working, if we turn the hot water on. Oh yeah, there it goes, you can see that lever moving. And you can see the little cam inside has, has moved around. Well you probably can't because the camera's not picked it up, but that lever's moved. Judging by what happened when I now turned the, the hot water on, I don't actually think the motor is at fault. I think it's probably going to be the valve itself, because the property's been, been empty for we think between three and six years. I don't really want to have to change the whole valve, at least not today, day one, day two, whatever you want to call it. 
I need to get some hot water working. So hopefully we can just free it off. Let's have a go at that, because I can't turn it with my fingers. Yeah, that's really stiff. Yeah, there we go. That is freeing off quite nicely. I can now move that the quarter turn that it should move with my fingers. So I reckon, I reckon that's done the job. Let's get the motor and we can just locate that back on. Push it down on its little locating pegs and I think if I turn the hot water back on, let's move you around here, I think if we turn that back on, the motorized valve's now in the correct position and I think what we've got there is a fix. Let's head up to the cylinder. Yeah, I can feel warmth in the pipes already. That is another successful fix for today. And that leads me quite nicely into telling you about what I want to do with the heating system in the property. Because whilst a vented system like this with a regular boiler is beautifully simple, it's very old tech, it's not very economical, and it doesn't give us what we want in the future. I did think about going with an air source heat pump, but that would involve upgrading all of the pipe work throughout the property because 15 mil copper is not enough for that type of system. And I don't really want the pump and the noise outside. So I think what we're gonna do is go for a combi with a wood burner in the lounge. And with the prices of energy and fuel at the moment, I think that's quite a good option it's quite a big lounge and there is a chimney and we really want a wood burner so that is one thing that we're definitely going to be putting in. I've got in mind the boiler I'm looking for. Let's pop on to iHeat's website. Now I've done a little bit of work with iHeat before. You've probably seen I did a sponsored video with them. Um, and I'm hoping they can sort me out with this. So let's go iHeat. Now if you look here on the iHeat website, I'll put the little screen recorder up on the screen because I think it's easier for you to see. Now the beauty with iHeat's website is we can run through their online builder together. If we just press on see boiler prices, we can actually follow all these really simple options like which fuel heats your home, well it's mains gas, and what type of boiler do we currently have, that's a regular boiler. We can follow all these really simple questions and at the end of that process, we will get a fixed price and a date for installation from iHeat. So let's finish our build on their website and see what boilers they offer me. Now before I show you the boilers that I've been recommended, I've put in the boiler move because we want to move the boiler to the external wall and I've put in a combi conversion. So we take the old regular boiler out and put in a nice new combi. So let's see what boilers they've recommended. So there's valiance on there. So interestingly, they have recommended me the boiler that I already had in mind, and that is the Worcester Bosch 8000 style. Now for the property at the moment, the size it is, well one bathroom, 35 kilowatt is a little bit bigger than what you typically go for. But you've got to remember, I'm going to be future proof in this property because we're eventually going to have a big extension on the back. So that'll be a shower cubicle, a bath with a shower over the top, and probably around 20 radiators. And I really want to make sure that we get a combi boiler that can handle all of that. So we're going to go for the Worcester Bosch 8000 styles. So if we look here, I've been given a fixed price by iHeat, and that of course will include everything. The whole installation job, the conversion from a regular boiler to a combi boiler, the boiler move, everything. Now this video is sponsored by iHeat. I am working with them on this and they're gonna come over and install that lovely Worcester Bosch 8000 style with a very pretty glass front. And you'll see all of that in episode two. So make sure you're subscribed if you're not already and I'll see you guys on the next one.